I learned to I, I learned uh, uh, scales. <laughs> cycle of fourths, a cycle of fifths, but that's um, not quite right because if I go C, F, B flat, E flat, now they're fourths. But what if I do this? How do you know which direction? So then they're, then they're fifths. So I just call it the circle. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, B, C. So everything I practiced was in all 12 keys. If I learned the tune, it was in all 12 keys. If I learned an arpeggio, it was in all 12 keys. And um, uh, I, you know, I found out much later about modes and et cetera, all the stuff that's in the teaching in college. And um, I had to know about it because um, I did wind up teaching in college. And at one point I ran the guitar program at University of the Arts. Um, and, um, I just, uh, I realized that, wait a minute, I didn't learn how to play it like that. I didn't learn to play jazz like that. Um, and I couldn't get kids to, to play. It didn't sound like jazz. It sounded like they went to school. I mean, how did Charlie Parker learn how to play? There was no schools. Uh, Wes Montgomery could barely read music. Uh, every guitar player, all my guitar player heroes I met, I got to meet and actually play with most of them. Um, Joe Pass, he called these things a grip, it's a G7 grip, and he had a couple other, he had tons of them all over the neck. Tal Farlow called them boxes, I play in a D minor 7 box, you know, and um, every, everybody had uh, a different way to look at it, but I started to realize, boy, this is pictures. It's visual. Pat Martino, same thing. He saw minor chords everywhere. Um, he take away the F and A flat minor. So he'd play some minor, like in, in Pat's words, there's some minor sounding activity, melodic activity here, Jimmy. There's a guy I knew all my life. He really helped me out with my... Uh, record deals and, and e e everything, and just been a good friend. Um, got me endorsement deals with strings, and you know. I learned from my father, he would show me tunes. By rote, I, know, I knew this tune. And I would just play it like him, the way he showed me how to play it. I didn't even know the names of the chords until much later. Um, and, and that was that and from other musicians. Example, playing, uh, I got playing the, in this wedding band and I knew three songs, I think, Girl from Ipanema, Ebb Tide, and something else. And of course they didn't play any of those tunes. And I remember they, they, they played a tune called Green Dolphin Street, I didn't know it. And um, so the guy said, I heard him yell out, C. Actually he went like that. See, there's all these, that's C, this is key of G, this is key of F, okay? But it's key signatures. So, uh, first chord, C. Second chord, I had no idea, so I didn't play. There was a saxophone player in the band, and so he would lean over to me and go, and he would play these notes in my ear. And then he'd look at me and he'd say, you got that kid? And I said, yeah, I had no idea what he's talking about. So I went back and I asked my father, he says, oh, he said, he's showing you what note moved in the chord. C major, C minor, A7, D flat 7, C. Then this guy could hear 2, 5, and C, etc. And so it, it was uh, a little couple tunes from this guy, a couple tunes from this guy, you know. I, there was always somebody around I could ask a question to. And man, I had a lot of questions, you know, and uh, I, I, I learned most everything I know about uh, jazz from a guy named Al Stoffer. And then, I mean, that was a very long time ago. And since I, I, uh, I have my own way of uh, 
looking at the guitar. Um, I, I never uh, transcribed, I didn't take things off the record. I stole the concept, meaning that um, if I heard a lick that I liked, I would, I would learn it, okay? And then, like, I, here, okay, I'll give you an example. On Dominant Seventh Chords, I listened to West Montgomery record, and he did this. And I really liked the way that sounded, so I learned with that. And I thought, what is that? No, he's playing an E-flat major 7 arpeggio over an F7 chord. It was a sound that he liked, because he used it a lot. And so I just thinking, boy, what if I did it from the root, from the 3rd, the 5th, the 7th, the ninth, the 11th, the augment 11th, and the 13th? And I, I started to, you know, practice every song I, I, knew, I knew like that. And so it was basically you get to the point where you can play any interval at any tempo at, and you can, you're never lost in the chords because it's something that you practice. They all sound different. The root sounds different than the third. And to me, they make colors. This is neutral, it's the root. The third is blue. Major seven, more blue. It could be anything. It could be colors. It could be just a feeling, etc. And like for example, here's an extreme example. Here's the note C. Okay, look. It sounds like this note changed, but it can't. I'm making it in different parts of the chord. And so. That's how I developed my ear, and so I could hear a tune, and I, I knew what the, the the melody, chord melody, I knew if that's the third on the top, I knew it was the third. And actually, nowadays I can move my hand faster than I can tell you what the chord is. I just know what it is from doing it a long time. I, in, in the beginning it was guitar players. Listen to guitar player, guitar player forever. Everybody, all those people I mentioned, and um, not that I got tired of it, uh, but I discovered Charlie Parker and John Coltrane and Miles Davis and Oscar Peterson, and Bill Evans. Wow, that was a whole new world to me. You know, I, I had to train my ear to figure out what they were doing. You know, and I, uh, I, I learned not more. Yeah, I think I would say, yeah, I learned more from listening to other instruments rather than guitar players.